Look at Genesis chapter number one. I'm going to try to get through this in a few minutes. I'm going to start at one. So, guys, I know what, where we're going to end up where I told y'all uh, in media. <clears throat> but I need to address this right here. First and foremost, the Bible says, Genesis 1 and 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 starts off saying what? Now. now. If there is a now, there had to be a then. So there's a whole lot missing between the first verse and now. Okay? It says, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face, over the surface, surface, surface. Sir, sir, sir. What is the word sir? S-U-R. I'm, I'm hearing something, but I can't see it. Look, look up the, the prefix, sir. S-U-R. Mm. So darkness was over and beyond the face. What's a face? Oh, God. Your identity. So now look at it this way. Now the earth was formless, meaning it didn't have any form. It was empty. Nothing was on it. Darkness, meaning it was just darkness, was over the what? The identity of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, meaning that the Spirit of God was not involved with the formless, the empty, the darkness. The Spirit of God was watching over it and seeing none of these characteristics are characteristics of God. Formless, empty, darkness. No, none of that's God. Lead me, Lord. I didn't, I didn't even come here to talk about this. God, and my media guys will tell you I had something totally different that I sent them out. How did it get that way? Revelations 13. No, Revelations, try Revelations, Revelations 12. I'm going to show you what happened at the now. Verse numbers, Revelations 12, verse number 7. It says, then. <laughs> Did you catch that? Yeah. In order for there to be a now, yeah. there has to be what? Yeah. It says, then war broke out in heaven. Now, let's go back to Genesis. Okay, Genesis 1. God, I just got excited, right? Genesis 1 says, in the beginning... God created the heaven and the earth, right? Boom. Then war broke out in heaven. Micah and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels also fought. But he could not prevail, and there was no place for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was thrown out, at the ancient serpent, the ancient serpent, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil slash Satan. The one who deceives the world. He was thrown to earth. 
and his angels with him. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. Why? Because Satan had been cast down to the earth. Am I making sense? So in the beginning, it was perfect. War broke out in heaven. Heaven breaks out in war. And God says, you can't stay here. <laughs> no, you, you, you got to go. Because see, you got to understand something. All this that we're talking about in Revelations is spiritual. And everything that you see in the earth realm has to happen in the spirit realm first. Why? Because it is the seed. It's just like if you ever wrote a play. If you ever wrote anything, you write it out first, and then you see it, act it out. And when, thank you, God, when you write it out, you're writing what? A script. We read what? Scripture. So we're basically just acting out what's already written. So if it is written that you're the head and not the tail, ask yourself, why am I breaking character? If it is written that I'm above and not beneath, ask yourself, am I, am I acting the right part? Am I extra in this? Or, or am I a main character? <laughs> oh, God, you are amazing, I'm telling you. So he says, now the earth is formless, void. You see all of that, right? And then watch this. Darkness hovered over the face of the deep. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. Capital that evening came, and then morning, the first day. So most people believe when God said, let there be light, that it came bright outside. And when you ask people what gives outside its light, it's the sun. When you ask what gives the moon its light, it's the sun. So when most people read, and you've probably been in church 40, 50 years and have blown over all of this, and we ain't even out the first three verses yet of the Bible. He said, let there be light. The fact is, it wasn't the sun. It did not get bright outside because the sun wasn't created till the fourth day. The moon wasn't created till the fourth day. So when you go back and says darkness, he called night. Hebrew word for light is knowledge. Hebrew word for darkness is ignorance. So he is saying, let there be light. He is saying, let there be knowledge. And then watch this. It says he separated the light from the dark. When you have light and dark mixed together, you have confusion. He's not talking. There's no such thing as separating this light from a dark room because as soon as you turn that light on, the darkness is not there. So what he was doing, he was saying, look, all of this messed up truth is a whole lie. You can have 99% truth and 1% lie makes it a whole lie. And he says, I'm going to separate the light from the darkness. If you go into the book of John, it talks about in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. And it says, and he separated the light from the darkness. Then it says, and darkness comprehended it not. To comprehend means to be thinking. So that's the enemy's flat out saying, wait a minute, how in the world did this just happen? Hello, somebody. Amen. So when God created man, 
he said, watch this. And I've said this before, but I just love how this flow. When he, when he created the fish, he spoke to the water. When he created the plants, he spoke to the ground. When he created the birds, he spoke to the sky. But when he created man, he spoke to himself. He said, let us make man in our image. Right? And when he placed man on earth, he says, I give you all power, all authority, all dominion. Rule the earth. Plants can't even, nothing happens without you. You own everything. Henceforth, the reason why you got all these binding and loosing, binding and loosing, y'all misusing that because that ain't got nothing to do with what we're doing it for. When he says, whatsoever you bind in earth, we bind in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth, we loose in heaven. That's him saying, you got power of attorney on earth. Whatever you allow on earth, that's what we're going to allow in heaven. So on earth, if you say gay marriage is right, heaven going to say, well, that's their spot. We ain't going to fight against it because he's an authority there. Uh-oh. It's the reason why he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. When you got a key, you don't have to knock. When you live there, you don't have to knock. He says, I'm asking for permission to come into a, 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 an earthly realm that I gave you. And he said, the, he said, the only thing above my name is my word. So because I left you in control, I'm not going to do anything in the earth realm without a man. When I say man, I'm not talking gender. I'm talking human. Because man is the species Male and female are the genders, just like when it comes to cows, heifers, and bulls, but they're all cows, and you don't see heifers and bulls fighting for superiority. (laughs) It's a shame that animals deal better in their roles than we as people. Because when we're asked to do our part. What you trying to hold me back? Bruh. God gave us what he gave us for a reason. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, but into this whole situation here, he created the earth. And this is the reason why when Jesus came, he didn't just show up. He had to come into the earth the same way everybody else came into the earth. Why? Because he gave man dominion and authority, and man gave it away. Why didn't God stop him? Because how you going to stop your boss? Well, well not, not even like that. How, if you own something and you tell somebody else, do what you want to do with it. You can't tell them who to invite. Even though you are the landlord, unless you just ain't got no more time, better time on your hands to sit up and watch what they do, you are bringing them in and trusting that they're going to take care of what you are allowing them to hold on to, right or wrong. So no, when it comes to our God, he is, will always use Somebody that's willing to get the point across. And somebody that won't compromise to get the point across. Am I making sense? So, now, how do we get here? How do we get so messed up? Make it shareable. How many times you done seen that? Genesis 3. Oh, didn't we just talk about 
the mighty serpent in Revelations. So what you're seeing in Genesis is the earthly manifestation of what took place in the spirit. Do you see that? Here it is. Now, the then was in Revelations chapter number 12. Do you, you done forgot already. Let me even finish show you. It says, so the great dragon was thrown out. The ancient serpent, who is called the devil, Satan, the one who deceives the whole world, he was thrown to earth and his angels with him. Now, the serpent was the most cunning of all wild animals. You see how that flowed right there? Now, the serpent is the most cunning of all wild animals that the Lord God had made. He had said to the woman, did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? That leads me right there to believe number one. Thank you, God. Wow. Either he was listening when God gave Adam that instruction, or he had attempted to tempt Adam before, and that's what Adam told him. Because his words are too precise. See, you got you, you, you to gotta seek God for revelation for his word because a lot of times when you see it, you don't see it. And you can only receive, it's, 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 like, it's like if I wrote my wife a letter and I just said a few uh, kooky things, you might look at the letter and be like, man, that was dumb, that was goofy. But if you ask her what it meant, she'll be able to tell you what it meant due to the relationship that we have. Same principle applies with this Bible. You just can't read it at face value. You have to ask God, God, what is this saying to me? God, what's, what, what out of all of the, everybody didn't write down everything. So it's got to be some stuff that I'm not seeing. And that's where revelation comes from. And in th these days, you have to be very careful with that because people will make up a short story that ain't got no biblical context whatsoever. Now, he said the serpent was more cunning than anything. He said, did God say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden. But about the fruit in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat or touch it or you will die. She gave up the whole cold. Because, see, what the enemy does is fish. I don't know the whole truth, but where was you at yesterday? Why you go there? What was on your mind? Most people I know only go there when they feel in, oh, is something wrong with you? See, you be better be careful all of these fishy people. And, and, and you better be careful of being a fishy person. We, we, you know, around here, we don't just deal with the people that's coming after us. We got snakes that do what they do right in the church and don't even realize it. We're not, we're not victims here. Oh, I get so sick of that, boy. The reason why God cut your friendship off is because he knew what they were saying behind closed doors about you. Oh, well, what did, did he cut them off because what you said? Stop acting like God closing doors because what everybody doing to you. Every, no, you done done some messy stuff, too. He may be cutting you off from hurting them. That's where humility comes from. Got to be humble, man. All of us got stuff that stink. And think God shows no favoritism. I read it about five times in the Word. He said, no favoritism. So you can't sit God on nobody. God going to get him. He might not. And as a child of God, that shouldn't be your aim anyway. Hello, somebody. Let's get back to Eve. Let's get back to her. It says, now the serpent said 
She said, she said, God said, you must not eat it or touch it. Oh, my goodness. Or you will die. Not might. Will. Right? Then he says, no, you will not die. Hmm. Oh, the serpent said to the woman, in fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Then the woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at. Oh, good for food and delightful to look at. Most of y'all pick your mates because they're delightful to look at. No substance, but delightful to look at. We don't like that. When you ask to check the box for everything you're looking for in life, if, if more than 40 per, 30% of it is physical, you done lost. Because God don't pick. Matter of fact, God don't pick your husband or your wife for you. Oh, y'all didn't want to hear that part. God don't say, this is your wife. And you better marry her. So you mean to tell me God going to tell you this is your wife and you better marry her, but then give you an option on salvation? Where that makes sense at? You better marry this person, but you can choose me if you want to or not. See, people use God said to keep you from talking back to them. Because once you tell me that the Lord told you, I ain't, hey, that's between you and God. Even though I can know you lying, but you said that the Lord said so. You could possibly be telling the truth. I'm not going to fight with that. But when you look at it, If he made salvation optional, why is he going to make you do and stay and marry somebody else? Oh, wow. Somebody said, oh. (laughs) Lord, I just need you to send me. I did. (laughs) But he wasn't delightful to look at. (laughs) Oh, that hurt. Let's get back to this. I'm almost done. Now, now. Going to get it out because y'all crazy. See, I'm trying to give some people a chance. You're trying to give people a chance because we're missing out on quality people. Because they don't fit a certain description that could be changed in a car wreck. That, that's just the truth of the matter. That character and that attitude. Not even a car wreck going to change a bad attitude. It might, no, it might, might make it worse. Because if you get married, boy, through your marriage, you're going to change shapes and sizes <laughs> 10, 12 times and be making promises. We're going to get started next week. <laughs> All while holding a pack of cookies. We're going to get started next week. And when you get that oh well spirit, oh well. <laughs> as long as both of us saying oh well, we are all right. Hello, somebody. Now, the devil flat out called God a lie. But I want to show you how tricky he is. In Revelations, it said the dragon. 
what's bigger, a dragon or a snake? So in Genesis, he presents himself smaller than what he really is. <laughs> he know behind this door is a whole dragon tail because the Bible says his tail swept a third of the angels. And a lot of men, some tail swept you. Right out of the presence of God. Lost all your dominion and your power and your, oh, come here, Adam. Hey, this is why Adam fell to Eve, because something happened. Y'all not talking. Y'all not hearing me here. Woman, you better understand that the power that you have can and will be mismanaged and misused when you're using your power for self-gratification. that a man can get a woman to pimp herself out. People can say that's crazy all they want to, but you don't know where that woman is and what has happened to her in her life. And nine times out of ten, what may have happened to her in her life was the instability of a covering called the dad. So it all goes right back to the man. Oh, God, I'm not trying to go in here. Okay, I'm going to stay focused. Y'all want me to go there, but I ain't going there. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to stay focused. He called God a lie. He said, no, you will not die. The serpent said, in fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will become open and you... Now, hold on, devil. Since you know all of this, how come you didn't know what God said? You know all of the answers now that I've given you a clue. But you didn't know what God said. Hmm. Right? And so, she looked at the tree and saw that it was good for food and it was delightful to look at. She took it. She ate it. And then she gave it to her husband with her. Tell somebody, you can't share, you can't share. Everything. everything. Because where the revelation is for tonight, this tree was not a physical tree. This was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This tree that's being spoken of in this particular passage of scripture is a conversation that should have never been had. In other words, he says, this right here is planted here and it looks like all different kind of fruit. But once you start speaking to it, words are seeds. And once you allow those words to be implanted into you, you're going to start bearing the fruit of what was said. And what do you do? You take it and you share it with other people. So what the devil spoke into Eve, she then turns around and convinces her husband that this is the right thing to do. Oh. Food. Your spirit is eating 24-7. 